This is Apologetics Live. To answer your questions, your host from Striving for Eternity Ministries, Andrew Rappaport. All right, I'm Andrew Rappaport, and I want to welcome you to Striving for Eternity. Yeah, no, actually, this is uh, Pastor Justin Pierce, and we've got a, a really good show tonight. Um, we do have a special guest. Our special guest is uh, none other than the man himself. It is Andrew Rappaport. We, we drug him kicking and screaming in. It was amazing. You should have seen the battle, the conflict that Dr. Anthony Silvestro and I had to go through to get Andrew Rappaport to come on his own show. It was incredible, but we got him to come. So we, uh, we do have him here. Um, again, this is Apologetics Live. And uh, we are excited to talk to you tonight. Um, th the main issue of tonight's topic is uh, Christians and how do we vote? Who are we voting for? You know, what is it we're going to be voting for against? You know, the, the issues we're going to talk about our president, Donald Trump. We're going to talk about the, the you know, um, um, uh, the thing, the, the guy, the, the, guy uh, the thing guy, you know, um, the hairy legs guy. What's his name again? Oh, that's uh, Joe Biden. And we're going to talk about another uh, man that's come in, uh, kind of come into the scene. Um, we may pick up three or four other people. We don't know, but we're going to uh, try to talk about uh, as many people as we can and discuss just uh, from a biblical perspective uh, who we are voting for, why we're doing the voting, what we're uh, talking about. Again, we're at Apologetics Live, and we do want to invite everyone. If you have any questions, comments, you want to come on the show, have a discussion, uh, go to Striving for Eternity. I'm sorry, go to apologeticslive.com uh, and you can click on and um, you can come on our show and ask any questions you want to, you know, have a discussion with us. If you agree with us, if you disagree with us, um, it's fine. Any way it goes, you know, every one of us, we have opinions, we have thoughts. We try to try to do things in an uh, excellent manner. And we want to thank you for uh, just being here tonight. Uh, with that said, um, Let's see. Uh, Dr. Anthony Silvestro is on. Hi there. Hey, how are you tonight, Justin? Uh, brother, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Uh, you know, I, I wonder how long should we leave leave those guys backstage, you know, maybe for a half hour, 45 minutes. So. Yeah, I mean, we have two yeah. special guests tonight. I don't know which one's more special, though. We have we have Pastor Andrew Rappaport, and we also have... The Cluck uh, Commander. Chicken Man. Yeah, Cluck Commander. <laughs> So I don't know. I don't know which one is more special, and do we bring the more special one on first? I think we need to have have the chicken the chicken on first. I mean, we we've, we've got to have the chicken. So I mean, it's up to you. But but uh, you know, of course, I mean, everybody's you know been asking. You know, where's Andrew at? Where's Andrew at? And I mean, it's been for weeks, and it's like the, the, those ugly guys. We got to get him out of here. We got to have the ugliest guy come in. We got to have the one that's you know that's after the ugliest one comes in. Of course. John outdid everybody last week. He, he, he decided to get attacked by a, a raging chicken and it assaulted him. It was uh, it was an incredible event. I wish that we could get the video of that. You know, it would, it would be epic right up there beside the, um, the no babies. Yeah. Tripping over his chicken. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Well, why, why don't we bring why don't we bring John on? I'll, I'll yeah. Good evening, John. How are you today? Is your microphone's not working? Well, let's see if we can't. Oh, I can't unmute you. Yeah. So you'll have to do it yourself. Yeah. Let me say this. Let me just say this. Okay, he's back. Let me just say that it was a default chair. It was something wrong with the chair where I fell <laughs> into the bushes. Uh, the chickens were innocent. <laughs> the, the chickens were innocent in this in this uh, this situation. So I, I just want to be clear oh. that. Uh, that the chickens were were innocent and that uh it was completely the chair's fault that i fell uh last week uh at the uh the time mark of like an hour and <laughs> 12 minutes or something i don't know what it was but anyway <laughs> check it out yourself i i fall on my butt yeah. so you're so you're saying you didn't have to execute the chicken and eat them no, no, no. I, I, I would rather keep the chicken and continue making the eggs 
so that way I can have free food. <laughs> so oh, don't worry, the Democrats will find a way to tax that too. So yes, they will. They yeah. will. <laughs> well, let's let the uh, professor, doctor, the commander, the main man come running in here. So yeah. So so we're we gonna let our last guest come in now. Absolutely. You ready? Drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for having me in my own show, guys. <laughs> hey, listen, I'll, John, I'll make you feel better uh, before yeah. we get to more serious topics. Um, you're, you're talking about, I didn't get to, to see it yet. I'm still a little bit behind on catching up on some of it, but uh, I'll watch to see you, you fall out of your chair on the chicken. But to, to, to give the embarrassment to myself, we went ziplining. Mm -hmm a bunch of us at our church and we, were, we went out camping trip and like there were, we had two lines, one that was longer that you, that you kept on the rope at all times. And then the other was just when you did a zip line, you hook up. Well, one of the guys in front of me, this guy, John, just, he actually hooked up his zip line, which was shorter and just Ooh. zipped through an area that you're supposed to walk through. And, and I just pronounced very loudly, like, well, if John could do it, which meant everyone was looking at me. And I thought he just had the longer rope. And so I grabbed the longer rope and I just fell literally f right down, but hit the, the wood board <laughs> that you're oh, supposed man. to walk on. <laughs> and it was hilarious, even for me, even though I was the one most embarrassed because, <laughs> because it was just... You know, I thought he did the like he, because he's a bigger guy than me. I thought he'd use the longer line and just run. I figured I would just sit still and like glide down. No, instead, I just fell straight to the plank and <laughs> hit it hard. <laughs> so that would be a video of that. You would, you would have appreciated. I must say, did you have it on film? That's what I'm saying. No, 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 no. Because fortunately, John didn't have his GoPro with him, and uh, my wife was busy watching it back at the campground, and I was safe. Uh, but here, here, here he is actually saying he agrees. It was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Andrew, I see all. There's, there's people who have missed you. We see, uh, welcome back, Andrew. Good to see you. Um, we also see Andrew's expressions make him unique. So I mean, everybody, <laughs> if you want to see Andrew look like a clown at any point, just go to one of his old um, Academy videos. <laughs> Pause it literally anywhere. You'll see a great clown face. Almost as good as the one on the upper right corner of the screen right now. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> oh, that's the funny shot right there. <laughs> that's a great one. So, so you know, having having said all that, um, you know, we, we do have we do have some serious topics to talk about tonight, especially in regards to the way that um, some Facebook posts have just blown up over the last oh well, either four or five days now. Oh, I think it's less than that. It maybe even less than that. I mean, it, it really blow up in the last day or two. But but there's so we, we want to address some things. Now we're gonna have several shows coming up over the next couple of months. We're gonna have Pastor Chuck O'Neill on, and we're gonna walk through through understand a correct understanding of, of the Bible and Christianity and politics and uh, what the proper balance is. We're gonna have Sean Waugh is gonna come back. He was with us back in February or March. Um, he doesn't know he's agreed to this yet, but he will. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. He's gonna come back on the show in the next couple of months, and uh, and and we're gonna we're gonna walk through some similar topics. We tonight we intended on not talking politics. We intended on talking apologetics. We intended on on just having some fun in in uh, in going through conversations. Yeah, right. Debunking every evidentialist and classicist out there. But, you know, because of what's happened the last couple of days, we want to talk about this issue. So we want to talk about the presidential race that is ahead. Well, before, before you get to that, we do need to clarify something that Ethan is saying, that he claims he heard someone bought me a meal. It's true. That, that's a fabrication, Ethan. See, someone bought Anthony a meal. And though many people mistake Anthony for me, buying Anthony a meal even if he tries to claim it's a striving fraternity event, is not buying me a meal. It's it, it, not striving fraternity. And he, in fact, if he was representing striving fraternity, well then. It's uh, a theological it, term called imputation. It was yeah. imputed onto you. 
It, you, yeah, that's how that's how bad it is. Matt Slick can't buy me a meal. Um, I, I should announce for folks who are uh, regulars to the show, uh, I, I, I am back. And if those who are looking, they look behind me and it looks a little different. I only have one empty bookcase behind me. And then there's windows on either side. I am in a new location. I'm not where John in the super secret bunker or whatever he used to call that <laughs> when he did his show. <laughs> but but I am in I finally did move. Uh, so I am now a Pennsylvania resident, which means I can conceal carry. Yes, something I couldn't do in New Jersey. Um, <laughs> the rest of you just laugh, I know. But hey, you should move to Tennessee. You know, I, I can carry nice big guns in here. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> so, so uh, real quick though, just to to recap before, because we do have a lot we want to cover with the political issue. It is, you know, this is the season for it, uh, and I want Anthony. You know, I'll let you do the intro, but just to let folks know there, there's been a lot going on. Um, and we're going to hopefully be able to give some, some, uh, announcements with striving fraternity and stuff that we got, uh, happening, uh, that's in the works and we'll be talking to folks about it. So keep, stay tuned to this. I know that, um, Justin Peters or sorry, Justin Pierce and I have, we're supposed to work to make sure the podcasts have been out right after and we haven't synced up but we're going to do that maybe tonight after this one and so that you guys who listen on podcast don't miss anything although if you listen only on podcast well now it's too late you already realize that you've been missing them That's so, right. <laughs> so uh anthony let, let's talk politics um i should also mention ethan was saying wait when does the guest have controls um I, I guess when he's the guest and it's his own show. It's his own show. He's the owner. <laughs> it's <proprietor. laughs> uh, Now, we uh, also, one other thing to to bring up, I meant to bring this up. Anthony's got some new equipment. Do you guys see that? He actually sounds good. He, he, he finally has equipment that is Anthony-proof. And I don't mean Anthony Jr. <laughs> I, I don't mean Anthony. I mean big Anthony-proof. Uh, it's He's he's got himself a roadcaster and a good mic and and now all he's got to do is take a little dial and go up and down for volume and not touch any other knobs. <laughs> do we think he can handle it? This no. is much <laughs> we'll see. I mean, I did notice that he's got the windsock, which is to you know if the windsock for folks who don't know what you. When you have a windsock, like you see on mine here or Justin's or on Anthony's, the windsock is to basically keep track of, you know, so you don't pop your P's and your S's don't sound too strong and things like that. The other way of doing it, as you look on Anthony's, is a cheaper way of doing it is to put the little screen, which acts as the windsock. So Anthony has a windsock on his windsock. Yeah. <laughs> it's better than that so so uh, there's two screens <laughs> he really expects to pop his peas <laughs> i got it from had it set up this way so i just left it <laughs> and, and i am glad somebody noticed that uh, my shirt again matches my uh my cover so <laughs> Uh, yeah, but you know what doesn't match your cover is your hair. <laughs> well, you know, because there's not much left of it, and what is is turning gray. Oh, wow, it's so much old. Mid twenties. It's incredible. I like what KT says here. Don't touch the red button. Oh no, he did. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, with all the kidding aside, well, let's get serious. Uh, Anthony, why don't you explain, you know, we, we did, we, the three of us discussed doing some apologetics that is what the show's about. And we wanted to just talk different apologetics, which we will do in another night because there is some things going on uh, with politics. It is the Republican National Convention. It's a, it's the first time in my memory. I don't know if you guys remember a time where the DNC convention was last week. Yeah. Usually there's a couple of weeks between them, but it just seemed like 
one right after the other. Uh, so, but politics is is the the topic of discussion. Uh, why why we bring this one up, Anthony? Well, so for those of you who may or may not remember four years ago, uh, there was there was an interest. You know, it was very interesting the political climate four years ago. You had a lot of Republicans that said they're conservative. Some some more conservative than others that were running, and somehow they all lost to Donald Trump. And, and so we as Christians were left with literally Donald Trump, who is, I, look, his life doesn't exactly uh, <laughs> exemplify Christian behavior by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. But then on the other side, we had a Marxist. You know, and so I, I know we've talked about social justice on the show in the past. We had a recent couple of shows on Black Lives Matter. We see the Marxism that's really becoming entrenched in politics of the country and becoming entrenched in in uh, the church, unfortunately. Yeah. This this Marxism has been in politics for over a hundred years now. We probably should do another show on this one of these days to talk about its uh, how it's weaved into this country over the years. But but the important thing is, is that Marxism has never really been talked about on a grand scale. We never heard the term progressive until Obama's second term. And that's when that's when the liberal left started to get really comfortable with talking about Marxism. And so we saw the election four years ago as an election that that was literally the lesser of two evils, right? You've got a you've got clearly somebody who's going to bring in a Marxist agenda in Hillary Clinton. And on the other side, you've got somebody who is a relative unknown in terms of politics but seem to have, at least from a business perspective and, and, and an economic perspective, conservative values and spoke a good game in terms of, of economics um, and, 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 and some morality issues. Now, what we thought was really interesting four years ago is that there were a lot of Christians who, were, who didn't want to vote. They, didn't, they certainly weren't going to vote for Democrat. And look, I agree. It, I I, I cannot fathom how anybody who calls himself a Christian could ever vote Democrat anymore. I, there, there is, there's just no way you could do that. Start with abortion and go right on down the list, but there's no way a, a Democrat can do that. I think it's hard enough to vote for a Republican today, um, let alone voting for a Democrat. Having said all that, what do we see? We heard there's a lot of chatter between people talking about can't vote for Hillary, but you know what? My, my conscience can't vote for Donald Trump. And yeah. what I found really interesting is there were some people that were saying, maybe I can, I can still vote for Hillary because I can't vote for Trump. And, I, and so we were bringing up four years ago, wait a minute, Hillary supported her husband who had just as many moral failures, if not more, than Donald Trump has. Bill Clinton did these in the Oval Office. Bill Clinton did this with an intern, let alone other people. Bill Clinton had the same types of payoffs of women that Trump has been accused of. I mean, go go on down the list, and, and they were all there. Bill Clinton, we knew four years ago and, and beyond, was tied to Jeffrey Epstein and and little boys and girls being being robbed from their parents and and made into sex slaves in the sex slave trade. So, I mean, we we saw all this stuff four years ago. And and why we're talking about this tonight and what's going on in Facebook, for those of you who don't know, is this. There, is, there was a third candidate that emerged four years ago. His name's Tom Hoefling. And people propped him up as a major conservative and a, and a biblical Christian. So people who were saying, I cannot vote for Trump, said, well, you know what? Here's another candidate we can vote for. He is a stand-up guy. He's a righteous man. He's a Christian. And, uh, and he's, most importantly, pro-life. So this is the guy we have to vote for. When I looked into him four years ago, I didn't see much. I, I didn't see anything. I, I, I'm going to clarify. I didn't see anything by the way of testimony. And we're going to we're going to define this today. What what acceptable testimony is um, when we get to that point? But I couldn't find anything. So of course, as the researcher that I am, and want to make sure I'm doing a thorough job, what did I do next? I went to his wife's Facebook page. And look, the last thing that I want to do is talk about somebody's wife. This is, this is the last thing I want to do. And, and for anybody who has listened to me or seen me write, I have not written a single thing about his wife. I have not dug into anything regarding his wife. 
except for one thing. What I was trying to find out when I was researching her Facebook page and internet pages was where do they go to church? I'm trying to figure out what it, what do they stand for and uh, where do they go to church? And what did I, what did I end up learning that she was a Mormon four years ago? She was a Mormon that we know for sure. When I brought this up to Tom Hoefling, when others brought this up, now I wasn't friends with them on Facebook. Still, I'm not friends with them on Facebook. Other people were, they all got blocked. And next thing you know, her Facebook page, Sienna Hoefling, her Facebook page was taken down. Now, th there's people who have made excuses. I'm not going to name names. People say, well, you know, she's got a number of Facebook pages. She's this or that. And, and, you know, we don't know how to manage. Come on. That is, that is literally a bunch of garbage. That is a lie. She has one Facebook page that was a personal page and it was removed. Anybody can go to her Facebook page right now and see that it starts now on May 2019. There were there was years of history before that of Trump bashing in 2016. There was all kinds of posts about the Mormon church in 2016. And then when we brought this stuff up, it was gone. It was all vanished and her Facebook page was taken down. Um, the only reason why I even found out her Facebook page was put back up again, and this is what we're talking about today, is that when his name surfaced again a few weeks ago, I said, hey, I'm going to go check out his page. I'm going to check out his wife's page again. And guess what? Her wife's page was back online again. I scrolled all the way back to the beginning. I like started back up in May 2019. This time, there's no Mormon posts. It's all Trump bashing yeah, and a few other things. This is, this is what's out there. Now, this is the backdrop as to what we are getting into today. Because I saw this a few weeks ago. I stayed silent. I didn't worry about it. And then as I've seen Tom's name pop up more, in the last week, I put a post out. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. On somebody else's Facebook page, I put a post that said, "Hey, his wife was a Mormon four years ago. I have no reason to believe that that's not the case now." Um, I still can't find a testimony online, and so there we are. And Pastor Chuck O'Neill saw that, was already having the same concerns. Now, look, I, I know that we've worked with Chuck a little bit with a Pastor Mike Reed situation and, and, and whatnot. Chuck and I never spoke about Tom Hofling up until literally a week ago. He never was brought up. And he calls me and says, hey, I saw your Facebook entry and this person's Facebook page. What do you have to say about it? And I told him, told him what it was. And so next thing we know, um, Pastor Chuck O'Neill wrote a very good um, letter with sincere questions for Tom Hofling as to his testimony and his wife's. Very fair questions to ask a candidate who has been brandished as the Christian candidate, the righteous man that is running for president in 2020. This is this is the reality. And so this is where we land today. Now, before we get into discussing the political candidates today, I want to do a little exercise. Let me tell you my testimony. You can check my Facebook page. Within the last six months to a year, you will find out where I go to church, Olmsted Falls Baptist Church in Olmsted Falls, Ohio. You will find out who my pastor is, Pastor Chris Hinckley. No secrets. He's there. I post numerous times about where I go to church. People who follow me know what I believe. Very easy to find. I have a book that's written from three plus years ago. Anybody can pick up that book and see exactly what I believe about all kinds of uh, positions in, in doctrine. I am a member of Striving for Trinity Ministries, which is very easy to find. I'm a board member of it. I subscribe to exactly what Andrew has written down in his very thorough doctrinal statement. No secrets there. You can go to my wife's Facebook page and guess what you'll find. She also is a member of Olmsted Falls Baptist Church. Thank you for to. Her pastor is the same pastor. She has very similar beliefs as I do. She understands what the gospel is. We understand what our sins are. We proclaim the gospel regularly out, outside, whether it's people or for me in the open air. We've stated the gospel on our, on our Facebook page it, it, plenty of times in the past. The reality is, is that for somebody who wants to do research on me and figure out who I am, you don't have to look more than two or three minutes to find out what I believe, 
where I go to church, that I actually do go to a real church. <laughs> That's important here. I actually go to a real church. And then I have accountability with, with pastor as well as with other people that, <laughs> that are, are close to me. People like Pastor Andrew and, and, and others. So that is very brief what my testimony is. I am a sinner saved by grace. I am a sinner who has been forgiven for my sins through faith alone in Jesus Christ alone, in his death, burial, and resurrection alone, paying the penalty of my sins. That's it. On that, Andrew. So I, I mean... Clearly, even though I've been told I hide my real beliefs, I'm, I, my doctrinal statement's been out online since, I think, 2007. Um, it's about 10 to 12 pages long. It's not your typical doctrinal statement. It's kind of lengthy. Um, it doesn't take long to figure out that I'm part of Striving for Eternity Ministries. Uh, you can go to any of my social media, figure that out pretty quickly. From there, get what I believe. It wouldn't take you very long on Facebook to realize that I am at the Master's Church of Bucks County. It's the reason I moved to Pennsylvania. I'm one of four pastors at the church, and I'm doing the primary preaching right now. And that's not hard to figure out either. It's it, We're not hiding it. The church is a church plant, so it's a smaller church that we, we started in 2018 is when that began. It is a new church. So, but we have pastors, we have, uh, we'll, we end up having pastors, we don't have any deacons currently, but we're, we're praying for that. We have church discipline if necessary, we practice that. These are things that, you, you know, if you go back to my Rap Report podcast, you'll see what defines a biblical church. Bud and I spent five weeks discussing church and historically how how that has come about and and really easy to figure out i mean i come from a jewish background i didn't believe that i needed a savior however i knew i was a sinner i i i almost burnt my house down twice the first time we only needed a fire extinguisher the second time a fire department so i got better at my sin so recognizing myself as a sinner wasn't very difficult i didn't think i needed a savior what I ended up needing was to see that I was lost. And someone, thankfully, helped me to realize that my Judaism wouldn't be enough to get me into heaven. It wouldn't do that. And so I ended up uh, recognizing that not only was I a sinner, but I was accountable to Jesus Christ. And I needed to turn from trusting myself as a good person or trusting my Judaism or trusting my good works and trust what Jesus Christ did. That is the testimony. And, and by the way, as long as I've had my doctrinal statement, 2007 online, I've had a much longer version of my testimony. How I got saved is online. That's about a page or two long. I've also, if you go to the Rap Report podcast, have two different podcasts where I was on other people's podcasts sharing how I got saved and some events after that. And those are out there. So it would not take very long to find the personal testimony of Andrew Rap Report. Well, thank you for that. And I was just going to say for anybody who still doesn't know what you believe, I mean, you've got like, I don't know, a year and a half or two years of of podcasts where you actually go through doctrine, like two minute, two minute quick ones and longer ones. And okay. And the book and the book right there, what do we believe? It's about 200 pages on what I believe. (laughs) Which as I always say is a fantastic book. You can read Wayne Grudem's book, which Phil Johnson says you better paperclip a couple pages together about the gifts, but, but you can get this, (laughs) this bit of a, Wayne Grudem book, or you have this big of an Andrew book. It's an Andrew book. It's it's really good. Okay, Chicken Man. John, um, yeah, <laughs> you've like, been a pretty regular guest. Do you want to give a quick um, testimony? Do I want to make a quick testimony? Uh, sure. If you want me to. Yeah, and I should say, be, and I and you've been somebody who has run the after show for for um different podcasts that Strive for Eternity and Matt Slick have run. So you've been in the public eye and people have been able to find you as well and find out what you believe. But having said that, go ahead and, and throw a couple things out there. Yeah, I'll throw a quick couple things. I don't want to take up too much time, but anyways, uh, yeah, John Wilkinson, I am a, uh, 
uh, <laughs> I've been a Christian since I was been a little kid. I mean, pretty much, um, you know, I, I, uh, me say, I, oh boy, you got me on the spot here. But anyways, basically what I'm saying is uh, my faith is based on uh, what the biblical truth is as far as what of who I am. I'm a sinner, wretched. And um, basically I repented and uh, put my faith in Jesus Christ. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, let's see, what else? Um uh, I'm considered to be reformed, and when I say reformed, I mean I hold to the five solas. Uh, when I say I, I'm considered to be Calvinist, uh, when I say that, I can I hold to the five points of Calvinism, um, and uh, basically, yeah, I'm I'm saved by by grace by uh, by grace alone, faith alone, in Christ alone, uh, and you know. I don't know what else I can say. I mean, uh, but I mean, I'm on Facebook. I'm on in several groups, apologetics groups that I, that I talk to. Um, and well, yeah, I've, yeah, go ahead. So what church do you go to? What's your, who's your pastor? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Bridge Community Church uh, in uh, Harstein, uh, well, in, uh, in Shelton, Washington. And the pastor is Pastor John Martin. And he has uh, been there for probably like six years now. And uh, him and I, along with the elders, are are very well. I mean, you know, we, we always keep in touch with each other, and and uh, it's it's yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, no, great, thank you, Pastor Justin Pierce. Now, you know, pastor, so you obviously pastor the church. Um, <laughs> but go ahead, I mean, share some of this. Yeah, well, I, I don't, I don't have a testimony as yet. I'm trying to write one down right now. No, I'm just. <laughs> um, no, actually. Um, I was saved in 2001 at a, um, um, a revival and I'm not much on revivals. I'm, I'm reformed. Um, I'm a six point Calvinist. Uh, I believe in the, the, you know, the sovereignty of God as well. So I'm a six point Calvinist. Um, um, I'm pastor of grace reformed Baptist church down here in uh, Blountville, Tennessee. And, um, uh, we're small. We're, we're small little church. There's um, uh, not a lot of us. But the the point that we we uh, we try to make is that we're saved by the grace of Almighty God, and He is uh, our, our Lord and Savior. Uh, he brought me to salvation uh, by His will, not my own. Um, um, it, it wasn't that uh, I, I chose Christ. He chose me. He called me out. He broke me in the middle of my sin and showed me how wicked and depraved I was. And uh, I, I don't have a testimony of my own other than the fact that Christ saved me and he made me and he's used me for his, uh, for whatever purpose he wants to use me for. And uh, I'm here to be a servant of Christ. That's, that's my testimony um, in a nutshell. Um, I preach everywhere and anywhere I can. So um that's all I want to do. That's all I want to do is share the gospel, preach the gospel, teach the word of God, equip, you know, the, the saints of almighty God. And, um, that's, that's all I want to do. Um, so coming from that perspective, you know, one thing I will say is all four of us here, when we're, we're trying to come from a biblical perspective, not an angry, mean, you know, we're better than you perspective. And, um, when we're talking about politics, um, we have to remember that God is the God of politics as well. He's the one that has established government and we submit to him in every situation and every way. So let's, uh, that's what we're going to look at tonight. And so, you know, that, that's, that's what we got on, on me. So, <laughs> yeah. And so, so we have, we have two real candidates for president that actually have a, a real shot at winning. And we have a third candidate that has, put himself back into uh, into the race um, very, very recently. And so this is what we want to talk about tonight. Now, okay, let, let's let's start here. Joe Biden. Hey, wait, before before we get to Biden and Trump, uh, there's let's start with something that Justin said, because we, we have to recognize this first. You know, just Pastor Justin said that God is the God of, of politics. He, you know, politics is within not a secular realm. Every it's all within God's realm. Exactly. Th this is the, you know, who did, who put Nebuchadnezzar in place as king? 
That's right. God did. God not only put him in place, but God said that he would use Nebuchadnezzar to teach the nation of Israel not to listen. Because they they were under God's judgment for their disobedience. And, and this is a foreign concept, I think, for many Christians in America to think that somehow God would allow judgment to come on his people and that he, yeah. he would use this wicked foreign pagan king to do so. Well, yes, exactly. God raised him up specifically for that purpose and allowed him to do that. God is the one who is he God is the one who put Barack Obama in office. God is the one that put Donald Trump in office. Right. The the question that ends up getting into place here is it's not a question of well that's the that's not in the that's in the secular realm. I don't do that because there are people out there who are trying to say that as Christians we shouldn't be voting because that's not our realm. We only you know, to work in the church. The reality is there is no secular versus sacred distinction in the scriptures. Everything is sacred. And you're the voting, the fact that we have that right is something that is, is, um, you know, it's in this, the sacred category. So, what we have to recognize is when we look at government, it is God who establishes these people to be in place. If God is going to give us a candidate who is wicked and evil, that is that is God's purpose. And so for people who are like, well, I can't, I can't vote for a guy because he's not the best Christian candidate. And yeah. Ethan said it earlier, he put a post up, I don't know if we could find it, but he said, son, I've said for years is we're voting for president, not pastor. Yeah. And the qualifications are different. We're not going to look for the qualifications of a pastor to, to argue that the person must be saved if he's going to be president. You know, there's plenty of Christians who would make a horrible president. Just because the person's a Christian and has rock solid theology doesn't make him a good world leader. There's Ethan's comment. Thank you. Okay. And so this is a thing we have to recognize before we get into discussing the possible candidates is the question is who would make the best president. And right now in our day, this actually is not about the candidates. Okay, and I, I'll see what you guys think about this, but this is, we are not, I am not going to go to the voting booth and vote for Trump or Biden or even Tom. Um, I, how do I pronounce his last name? I forget now. Hofling. Hofling. Sorry, thank you. So we're not, you know, I'm not going to vote for Hofling or Trump or, or Biden based on them as an individual. Because the reality, this is one of those elections that's much more than just a person. This is really what's at stake now is the American way of life and Christianity being legal. Because I believe if you if the Marxists take over, Christianity's done. I mean, if you, if you look, that Black Lives Matter protester who was having lunch with her friend when all the protesters came by and wanted them to stick their hand up, maybe everyone doesn't realize that she was actually the one that wouldn't raise her hand. Uh, and was being abused at the restaurant was actually a Black Lives Matter protester that refused because everyone was telling her she had to do it. And she felt like, I'm not going to give in to what people forced me to do. But the irony is, is what were they all doing there? They asked her one question. Are you a Christian? Because that's the one thing the Marxists can't handle. Exactly. And this is what's at stake this election. It's not about any, it's not about right now Trump versus Biden versus anybody else. It's really about the American way of life and democracy and capitalism versus socialism and Marxism and an ending of America and an ending of the Christian witness. And that is what's at stake. Uh, you know, one of the things, I, you know, if we want, here's, you know, Ricky Gantz saying you, you are actually refuting yourselves show over. Well, I'd love for Ricky to come on in and show us how we are. Um, 
he, so he, he refuted himself in that Facebook posts when he admitted that he was voting for Tom based on the fact that he was Christian and then later said it doesn't matter that he's Christian. So that's the refutation for him. So here's what's interesting is that most of the people that are willing to vote and wanting to vote for Tom Hoefling, most of them are, are abolitionists. And not for those of you who don't know what abolitionists is, it, it's been a hijacked term. It is a term that now is for the abolition of, of abortion. Uh, used to be a term for slavery, right, years ago. And, uh, and now it's, it's for abortion, abortion only. It's, and it's a term that not only was hijacked in that way, but it's also been hijacked by a certain group. It has been a very unbiblical group in a lot of ways. Well, it's a cultic group. The cult, yeah. AHA, right? The Abolish Human Abortion Group. And so with this, within this abolitionist movement, they are, are really the ones who have been behind uh, Tom Hoefling as a, as a candidate. Now, here's what I find really interesting. Abolitionists for several years. And look, by the sense of the word, I'm an abolitionist. I believe we need to abolish abortion. We need to do everything we can to, to stop abortion in every sense. I think every all four of us here believe the exact same thing about abortion. Here's what I find really interesting, though. The, the abolitionist for several years, AHA specifically, has said we need to do everything we can. Let me say it again. We do everything we can to stop abortion. So they go as far as to picket really good churches like Emilia Ramos to try to suck members out of there. They're, they're not picketing bad churches. Grace Community Church and, and Shepherd, the Shepherds Conference. And G3 Conference they did. So these guys have picketed conferences of people who already are against abortion, of a lot of pastors and congregants who already are at the abortion mills preaching against abortion. So they say we want to do everything we can to stop abortion. Now, how does that apply to politics? We watched just uh, last year with Oklahoma, where, where lots of people spent a lot of money to fly in Oklahoma to demonstrate. That was all a good thing. I think it's wonderful that they went to Oklahoma and tried to use the legislature and guys that they thought were pro-life to get a bill passed, right? And and so obviously what ended up happening was tragic is people that said they're pro-life didn't vote for the bill. It was, it's horrific. But, but I bring this up because there's all these people who went there, Christians who went there, and AHA cultish members who went there because they were doing everything they can do to try to stop abortion. If you apply that same logic to a presidential election where there's only two viable candidates right now, exactly. I'm not saying one of them is that much better than the other in terms of his walk, right? I am not saying that, that Donald Trump is a Christian. I am not saying that Donald Trump looks like the righteous man as he walks. What I have said all along for four years and still say it now, and this is why the people who want to vote for Tom Hoefling are dead wrong, and there's nothing they can do with their logic to try to make it any other way. They're dead wrong about this. It's because if they're doing everything they can do to stop abortion, you're going to vote for the candidate that is that is is the one that's most against abortion and has an actual chance to win. So what we find with, with abolitionists is, is the... They've moved the goalposts very similar to what our government has done in regards to coronavirus when we're going to finally open the country up, right? Originally, it was to flatten the curve, and then it was to really flatten the curve, and then it was to, to stop people from getting, stop people from dying, now it's to stop anybody from getting sick. I mean, it's, it's been moved constantly. Well, think about this. We have what abolitionists say it's because we want to vote for righteous candidates. Oh, it's because we want somebody who is, who is a, who's a completely against uh, abortion. Oh, it's because, and you go right on down the line, but that has actually moved multiple times, that, that goalpost, so to speak. And, and so that's, that's my issue right now, is who we vote for and who's actually, look, is Trump the guy who's going to abolish abortion completely? I, I, look, clearly, unless God changes his heart. I don't. Well, but here's the thing. Name me the president. Name the president that spoke 
at March for Life and spoke and provided the one of the strongest, most biblical arguments that we've heard from any president. What's that president's name? Donald Trump. Donald Trump. You know, one so, thing I want to point it, out on this. This is one of the things like Ricky Gans in, in that thing was saying how, you know, he votes on this this issue. So he's OK, you're going to be a single voter issue on this. OK, but Trump agrees with Tom. So why are you not voting for the guy that actually has a chance to get elected and is showing that he's willing to do something about it more than any other president in history to end abortion? But to be fair, Trump has, has given some caveats, right? He doesn't believe abortion. Or he, he's OK with abortion in certain cases. Actually, he's changed that. Has he changed that? I, I, I don't. Yeah, um, actually, he has changed that. And so that's one thing I was going to point out is at the beginning. Uh, when Tom was making his arguments on Facebook, it was that it, he was the very same as uh, Hillary. He was the ha same as the other ones that he was going to have the caveats and whatnot. And he did. He did have those caveats at one point in time. And then uh, someone, and I don't know who it was, I believe it was Franklin Graham, but it could have been someone else, um, began to have some serious discussions with him about those caveats that he was trying to talk about. And uh, he actually he actually um, he actually made an about face on that and began to began to say, look, you know, at the very beginning, he was saying, you know, I believe in um, uh, what is it? The life of the mother and all this stuff. And and it was actually shown to him. Uh, if you noticed uh, last night, you actually had, uh, you know, uh, the, the lady that did the um, did the movie. Um, Abby Johnson. Ab Abby Johnson. I'm not all into Abby. I'm not saying that she's, you know, all that. But if you notice, he had her on there who was, you know, strongly, you know, uh, against abortion. I, I know she has some, you know, some bad stuff about her. And that if um, um, in, in her mind, as long as you know, it's OK or whatever. I don't know all the detail, but I do know that that she is is strongly able to articulate why this is murder in every circumstance. And he changed his understanding. Uh, I want to thank Ricky Gantz because he's as negative as he can possibly be on his statements. And I just uh, made that caveat on Abby Johnson. Um, Ricky, I think you need to come on in here and have a discussion with us rather than posting stuff on Facebook. Well, because it, but, it, 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 as biblical Christians, hold on just a second. As Christians, we love each other. We care for one another. We want to, we want to, Come from this, not from a, I hate you, you're the enemy, you, we want to attack and this, that, and the other. Look, we all want the best candidate, but we want the one that's going to win to be the one that's uh, the, the closest winnable candidate. And uh, if I want to stop abortion, my mind is that, you know, I'm definitely not going to help Joe Biden. You know, or let me yeah. say it the right way. I'm not going to help Kamala Harris become the next president. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but OK, so Abby Johnson, you brought her up. First yeah. off, uh, from my understanding, she's Roman Catholic. So exactly. which is an issue I have when, you know, Christian organizations have her speak, you know, pro-life organizations. All right. But when was the last time you saw, you know, the, the Republicans put up a strong Person, a person who was very strong against abortion, exactly at the RNC, and and so it's Trump who ends up picking these things. He's the one that, that has the, you know, kind of final say. Is you know the candidate usually gets the to to do a lot of that, and so, you know, what you end up seeing is he's he's picking someone that is known and strong against abortion, and. You know, so for people to say, well, he's he's you know, you have to vote for this other guy who hasn't demonstrated he's going to ever be able to win because it's my conscience because, you know, the abortion issue. Well, you got two candidates that are strong against abortion. So you vote for the one that can actually do get in elected into office. I want a question. Uh, who was it that went ahead and. Um uh, who was it? The one that went ahead and defunded Planned Parenthood, and uh, and and stopped them from having any funding. And then the the leftist in the uh, in the House and Senate actually reinstated the funding. Yeah, I think I think that was Trump. That was Donald Trump. Yeah. By the way, I guess I guess Ricky only loves Anthony here. <laughs> yeah, I think he loves all of us. 
I, he I, says, I, Anthony, I, love I love you, brother. Yeah, that was me reading that. But so, Ricky, I, I love you too. I know we disagree on this. Um, I'm not expecting to change your mind necessarily. Uh, well, I mean, I would love to change your mind. <laughs> I want to change his mind. What are you talking about? But uh, you know, here, here's the other thing, though. Let me let me bring this up. Abolitionists want to do all they can do to stop abortion. <laughs> There's one other issue that we have to talk about here: the fact that Christians were able to fly into Oklahoma. The fact that they were able to exercise their First Amendment rights to peaceably assemble and petition the government, which is the exact language of the First Amendment, is is only able to occur under a government that actually believes in the Constitution and Bill of Rights. And so we have to be honest with ourselves. We got one of two candidates that can win. Tom Hoefling cannot win this election, even if he was the righteous candidate. We're going to talk about this here in a little bit. Even if he was the righteous candidate that everyone says he, that many people have said he is, he's not, um, as far as we can tell. Uh, and, if, and, if, and if he is, he won't share those details with us, as we're going to talk about. But the reality is, is we got Biden versus Trump in this election. We already know what Marxism does. Marxism, going all the way back to Communist Manifesto, it written by Karl Marx. That book was not just for economic Marxism. It was against Christianity. Make no mistake about it. The entire French philosophes of the Enlightenment period of the 1700s that initiated the terms bourgeoisie and proletariat that led to the French Revolution, they were anti-Christian. This was The Enlightenment period was the answer against God. It was how, where do we get origins from without God? Where do we get science from without God? It was the entire Enlightenment period, and that is what led to Karl Marx in his book. Karl Marx was anti-Christian more than anything else, and we we've seen that parlay itself into what in, into the government today that we have, and especially the liberal left. So we have if we see a guy like Joe Biden get elected. What do you think is going to happen? We're going to see freedoms go away faster than ever before. We are going to see our ability as Christians to roam about freely, to preach freely, start to really get disintegrated. Now, look, I'm not scared of Joe Biden. I'm not scared if Joe Biden becomes president. And if I'm told I can't go preach, that I'm going to sit at home now because I'm told I can't preach. No, I'll obey God. I will go out and preach. Regardless of what the consequences are, I'll do it. I'll do it in a respectful way and loving manner, but I will do it biblically. And when, when, if there's laws that are passed that go against the Bible, I will stand with the Bible and not with, not with the, 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 the wrong laws that are passed. But having said that, it is a whole lot easier for us to accomplish goals that we want to accomplish, to, er, to eradicate abortion, to, to not allow governors to do what they've done with churches, which is to mandate them closing in a number of states, as well as all kinds of other things that the Marxists want to do, we can go around a lot easier and freer under another four years of Donald Trump. It's you know, reality. Okay, but let, let me, I want you to engage with uh, Ricky's comment because he has a good point here. So his question is, so you're saying that Christians aren't gaining ground in countries without the American Constitution? It's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is that it's easier to do it under Trump. Look, if Biden's elected, there might be some good things that come out of it. There, there, as we're seeing now with coronavirus and all these bad churches, because look, in general, not not completely, but in general, it's the bad churches that remain closed. The good churches have opened by now for the most part. And and what's happened is is people who were who were Christians stuck in these churches for whatever reason, they couldn't leave friendships and relationships and whatnot, even though they know the doctrine's been bad for years. They're leaving and they're going to the churches that are good churches that are open right now, including the church I attend. Yes, a real church, Olmsted Falls Baptist Church, um, in a real building and everything. <laughs> but but we have people that are coming to our church now that I was begging to leave the, the old church that we used to go to that has gone downhill in the emergent church movement. And so, look, under a Biden presidency, we'll probably see a much a much faster purification of the church. I'm sure that we can still do what we need to do in terms of preaching and we'll continue the fight. And Ricky, I love you. I know you will be there at my side as well as a few others in going out and, and continuing God's work out there. 
regardless of who's president, all I'm saying is if we're trying to do everything we can do to abolish abortion, it's not under Joe Biden and it's not under a vote for Tom Hoefling, which is literally taking away potential votes for Trump. It's just it's just what it is. Yeah. And I think, I mean, because the reality is they're going to try this election, unlike any other with these mail-in ballots, or there's going to be so much uh, voter fraud. But Ricky has the, the right point here that I have up on screen. Christians will continue to proclaim Christ and maybe die for their faith. And, and even more so, I would say that as Christians, the true Christians are going to be the ones that are still proclaiming their faith when Christianity is outlawed. Um, so if that's how things go down, then I'm um, fine. You know, if Biden gets elected and we're we're going to be it's going to be illegal to preach the gospel, then we're going to do it at threat of of imprisonment. So, you know, I, I you know, I know Ricky will be out there. So it's it's not you know, this isn't a you know, the, the issue that I, I see here is this is when we say we're going to vote our conscience, what does that actually mean? Exactly. Because when people say, I'm going to vote my conscience, typically they're saying, well, I'm going to vote pro-life, even if the guy can't get elected. But Trump is pro-life. So, and he's proven that he's trying to do what he can to put us, you know, defunding Planned Parenthood and, and this stuff. Will he, be, you know, truthfully, I think Trump is the probably the only guy with the personality to be able to pull something like that off. But, you know, he needs he needs a lot more support to be able to do that. Will Tom be able to do that? Think about it. Let's give it a scenario. Tom, you know, hopefully gets elected and other are Congress going to work with him. No. He's not going to put a stop to abortion. So if you really want to end abortion you're the, and vote your conscience, right now, unfortunately, Trump is the best choice. You know, yeah, I, absolutely. And so, so this is really what we're faced with right now is, is this issue, right? Trump versus, versus Biden, the only two electable guys. No, it's, it's, it's more than that. It's capitalism versus uh, socialism. It's freedom versus Marxism. It's it's Christianity, <laughs> legal versus illegal. I mean, th there's there's a lot more at stake than just because. I, and I think, you know, Justin, you're right. It's not President Biden. Well, okay, maybe it is for a few days before someone declares that he's too incompetent, and then you got President Harris, the you know most the 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 guy has the label of being the leftmost senator. <laughs> oh, exactly. well, one of, yeah, one of them at, certainly. Well, and let's remember something too: presidents don't make policies; Congress does. Presidents sign their names to it to to sign it into law. And if they veto it, then there can be a veto override in, in Congress. I mean, so that's basic government. It's the president doesn't really do it anyway. Yes, the president, if he has control of Congress in its Senate and and represent the House of Representatives, more of his agenda can get pushed through. Although, look, we saw what happened the first two years of, of Trump's presidency when Republicans had control of the House and the Senate. They got virtually nothing done. It was, it was it was ridiculous. I mean, what trouble? Because they didn't want to work with Trump. That's correct. Exactly. But, but neither one of them did. Neither side did. You got to think about it. The Republicans didn't want to work with him because they hated him. And we're seeing now that that you have just as many the rhinos that are in there that are career politicians. They hate Trump just as much as you know the left does, and, and they're showing it. That's why he was allowed to be you know, uh, persecuted for three and a half years of, of lies and, and all the innuendo. And, and you have to think about it. That's exactly what we're, we're facing as, you know, every single American today is facing in this society is the, the idea that, I mean, you're going to be canceled. You're going to be silenced. You're going to be, you're, you're going to be put down and, si you know, and silenced. But for the biblical Christian, you got to ask the question, you know, and, and you, know, you guys have brought it up and, and it's it's very important to say this. What should our standard be? I mean, uh, Matt Slick, I love the brother. Uh, just uh, excellent, great, godly brother. 
all, all, all to pieces. And he said, he, he said this, uh, here in Idaho, a lot of patriots are serious about defending the state. I keep hearing over and over and over again from people that profess to be biblical Christians that they're going to get their guns and they're going to get everything ready to go to war for the revolution or for the, you know, the civil war or whatever else is going on. And as I see the scripture, I'm going to defend my family. I'm going to defend my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ and try to take, you know, to take care of them as best as I can. But I'm not going to go to battle and go to war when the gospel is the most serious, important issue here, we're talking about saving babies' lives, being able to proclaim the gospel. That's not going to happen under under Biden or Harris. Uh, it's not going to happen. I, I'd say it. I mean, I don't have anything against Tom Holfling personally. I do have a problem with being called liar by by several people here lately. Ricky, I didn't like the fact that you called Andrew a liar or said he was lying. Uh, don't say that. You know, if 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 you say I disagree with something like that, that's fine. But don't say somebody's lying, you know, because you're 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 looking at the intent of the heart. I truly believe that as biblical Christians, our goal is to uphold all of godliness as much as we can. We're to try to, you know, affect the the change that we can. But even Peter said that we're to submit to the, the government, even the bad ones. Even the bad ones we're to we're to submit to them not to go to war against them and try to say, oh, I'm going to win by, you know, my military might and power. Um, our, our home's not here on earth. Our home's in heaven. I want Donald Trump or whoever's going to be president to be a godly man that will allow me and allow Andrew and Anthony and Ricky and everyone else, Matt, you as well, to be able to go out and proclaim the gospel as much as I can to everyone I can. And I, I'm going to tell you, that's my goal. So for me, I'm going to vote for Donald Trump. Now, I want to make it clear. I didn't vote for him last time, okay? Because I, as I was looking at it, as, <laughs> as I was looking at it, um, my, my opinion was that you had Ron Paul. He, was, he was, uh, had, has, had his election stolen. And I, I, at the time, I really wanted him to be in office. I thought he was a good candidate. I thought he was great. And I, I wanted to do a write-in vote. And, and I didn't see it that, that that was that big of a deal. But as I prayed about it and studied about it, especially over these past four years, I have seen a man who's been persecuted by people that want to persecute you and me, that people that want to, to silence you and me are persecuting a man who, let's face it, he's around Paula White and all these other, you know, false wolves, these bad, you know, bad people that are not Christians. OK, where he's around them and it, 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 it has a stink about it, but he's around them. And even with being around them, he is he is appears to be trying to uphold some biblical standard that I, I don't I don't know where it comes from on him. You know, I don't know where it comes from, if it's him or the Holy Spirit just just just, uh, you know, trying to. Well, I'm not going to say try because Holy Spirit doesn't try. He succeeds. But, you know, I, but I, I wonder if it's if it's, you know, God giving us some grace to be able to withstand and be able to stand up, as we've seen, like Dr. John MacArthur and these men do that are standing up for the faith and stand up for truth under under Harris. Uh, no, that's not going to happen. That is not going to happen. You're, you're going to be silenced, you know, and and. I would I would I would plead with the, the the biblical Christians out there. Don't get ready to go to war. Get ready to go gospel. Get, get ready to be a witness. Yeah. So, so let's go even further than this. Gonna, Anthony, let me because I do want to try and correct one thing. <clears throat> um, you know, and the thing that you end up I went tried to look with what you said, Justin, as far as Ricky call me a liar. There's a difference here now. I tried to look for the post that I responded to. I see my response, not the actual post. So I can't go back and fact check it like he wanted. But the issue that I end up seeing is, you know, with that, there's a difference. Lying is an intentional thing. Okay. I think what Ricky was making a point of is that he didn't say he was voting for Tom. Okay. If he didn't say that, that's fine. He was giving rationale for why he was voting, which is why I said you're voting for uh, president, not pastor. He, he was voting basically saying that we have to vote based on Christian principles. And 
so, but he was alluding to the fact that he basically had to vote for a Christian or the, the person that's most Christ-like. And that's what I had responded to. So the, if I said he voted for Tom, that's not actually a lie. I didn't, you know, if I said that, which is what he had said earlier, that was misspeaking. Um, lying would be what Tom did when he denied his wife was a Mormon Claim she was a Christian, and and recently is saying yes she's a Mormon. You know he had said that she was a raised Mormon that became Christian or or became gave her life to Christ. But there is no person that could come out of that get saved out of the Mormon Church and remain in a demonic institution like the LDS Church. I'm sorry. If, if she understands the true gospel and she's still practicing those things and he's saying that she doesn't believe things. Well, here's the reality. Tom, I asked him, does, does your, you know, so you're, you telling me, does your wife believe that, you know, G, that God, heavenly father, which is how Mormons would refer to it, that heavenly father was a sinner on another planet. And he's like, ah, oh, Mormons don't believe that. Well, that's what Mormonism teaches. Yeah. Now your wife may be a bad Mormon, and not believe it, but th that's fine. But, you know, he's telling me like, you know, and he, he was saying that when I was speaking of things, I, it was above my pay grade. So I told him, you know, I kind of have written two books on the subject of Mormonism. Maybe it's above your pay grade. You know, maybe you don't understand what Mormonism actually teaches. I want to, I want to put this out there though. I want to, uh, I'm putting up a, uh, this is a podcast on the Christian podcast community called Truth be known. And Nathaniel Jolly uh, started this podcast. I want to highlight this, the episode he did, these two episodes called It's Not About Politics and It's Not About Politics Too. And in part two, he actually, he's pretty strong. He actually says that he thinks no Christian can vote Democratic. He, I agree. I, I think he would even question someone that is is voting that. Anthony's pointing to himself because he, he's saying he, he said that too. Well, <laughs> Yeah. Here's here's the difference, Anthony. Let me give you, let me give you some background on Nathaniel Jolly. He came to us to be part of the Christian podcast community, uh, where we have we we vet people pretty pretty strongly. And when they, he wanted to do a podcast, he was a missionary. He's headed he was headed to Uganda, and his podcast was he and the Ugandan pastor that was going to be doing this together, and they were going to be. Um, you know, doing a podcast of, and about what the work that they're doing there. However, th and this this tells you uh, how serious this issue is. His position that he feels that that you can't be Christian and vote Democrat. The either the nation of Uganda or it was the missions, which I find hard to believe that heart cry would be the ones to kick him out. Yeah, I think it was Uganda basically told him, you're not welcome. Okay, so for him to say that you shouldn't be voting for Biden, and they said, you're not welcome, and now he's headed, he's going to have to head to, uh, you know, where he, he was originally heading to Alaska, to, you know, the, an unchurched area up there. So I, I recommend if you guys go to Truth Be Known Podcast, you can check it out at christianpodcastcommunity.org, or you could go and, you know, and look at all the shows there. There's like, 35 shows, I think, there now. But, you know, that is a pretty strong message, one that Anthony could even agree with. You know, one thing that I was going to point out to you guys is if you go to um, uh, Joe Biden's website and try to donate, do you guys know where that goes to? Uh, if you click donate on Joe Biden's website, uh, as I recall, it goes straight over to, uh, uh, no, I'm, I'm, no, I'm wrong. I apologize. I got it reversed. If you go to, if you go to Black go Lives to, Matter. If you go to the Antifa website, Antifa, both yeah. yeah. If you go to the Antifa website, I think the Black Lives Matter is still doing it. But if you go to Antifa dot uh, com and you type it in, it goes straight over to, to uh, the the DNC or Joe Biden's website to donate to him. Yeah. And so my point is, is uh, as you were just saying, Biden's. this is definitely <laughs> about Marxism. This is definitely trying to bring in socialism. And as as Karl Marx said, most people don't read Marx uh, Marx stuff. But uh, I had to read it in um, uh, so, uh, sociology class I took. And, and I'll tell you, it's, it's a wonderful read if you want to slam your head into the wall uh, multiple times. But as Karl Marx said, socialism is just the precursor or conduit to 
communism. Socialism is the is the beginning point of communism. And and what you see today is is people shifting from socialist mentality of we will we'll try to change everything politically to the communist mentality of we're going to force the change through physical violence. That's what you're seeing. And people don't understand it. They they miss the point and they say, uh, well, this is just, you know, the, our freedom in action. No, no. You've been indoctrinated to the point where you believe that what you're doing is socially acceptable. But what it is, is it's absolute communism coming in to take over and you will kill anyone that gets in the way. Yeah. You know, and that's what that's what Harris and that's what the the, the squad, that's what these guys are, are fighting for. I believe they're, they're going to push it. That's right. So, you know, I, I want to bring up a couple of things that we're going to get into the candidates a little bit. But first of all, if if somebody was to say who is the most godly person that is running right now, clearly it is Mike Pence. It is not Tom Hoefler. Clearly Mike Pence. And, and Mike Pence, make no mistake about it, has had an influence on Donald Trump. Amen. A major influence of Donald Trump. And, and so if, we, if we really want to vote for conscience and vote for a Christian a, what who seems to be a righteous man, it's the Trump ticket because that's where Mike Pence sits. So that's number one. Um, I do also want to say, and, and I want to make sure we, we, clear, we, we have the record clear because I want to make sure that, that um, nobody can ever come back to us, Andrew, myself, Justin, or John, and say we misrepresent him as character as anybody. And so, as I always want to be fair, I'm going to bring this up about Ricky too. Is um, as he said, just to be more clear, I never said you have to vote for a Christian candidate. I've said consistently over and over again, vote your convictions and never violate your conscience. So I, I at least want to put that out there. These are Ricky's words, and uh, and I want to make sure we represent him properly. Is uh, as, as far as to what he believes. He will be doing a show with Tom Hoefling on his own podcast in, on October 6th. I'll make sure I tune in for that one as well and uh, and, and join in. And uh, and apparently Tom has told Ricky he's willing to answer any question Ricky asks him. Well, so I'm looking forward to hearing those answers. And let's let's just let folks know we did invite Tom on here multiple times, uh, multiple times. And he said he usually never turns down an interview, but he would make an exception for us because he kept calling it saying that we were liars because we told the truth. He said we were unchristian. That he said we weren't Christian. Uh, it, it, he was projecting all of his behavior on us because he was judging us. He wasn't supporting his claims. We were providing support for why we said what we said. And so, you know, this, this is the thing that, um, you know, th this is the thing, Anthony, I, we do have to make clear. We actually invited him on and we ended up, we changed the topic tonight because of this discussion with him that the three of us had. And, and we had said, <clears throat> you know, we're going to, we're going to talk about it either way now, but we'd rather you come on exactly. because it, you know, we wanted him to, in his own words. So, so having said all that, um, as we talk about the candidates, I'm going to talk about Biden really fast and we're, we're going <laughs> to <we're gonna laughs> throw him to the side because we already know what we're getting with him. Look, if, if for, for Christians to vote Democrat is 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 awful, um, probably sinful <laughs> and a number of other things. But Biden's left is what is what you're watching right now. You're watching Democrat governors, Democrat mayors that are allowing rioting and protesting to destroy people's businesses, destroy people's homes, to murder people, to do all kinds of evil in the streets without stopping it. This is this is the left that is is representative of Joe Biden. This is the left that you can expect even more from if Biden gets in. This is who he is with. So so we're going to make sure you understand that really clear. Number and he is going to smell a bunch of people's hair. Yes, yes, he is. Yes, he is. <laughs> so, and, you know, number two, we've got Tom Hoefling. Let me tell the audience how this all came up again. When Pastor Chuck O'Neill, as I said earlier, decided to write an open letter to Tom Hoefling to ask him questions to answer about who he is, where he goes to church, that kind of stuff, 
that letter was put out on Facebook. I saw it almost immediately and I forwarded it um, on my own Facebook page with this as, as the starting words. Excellent letter to Tom Hofling, Pastor Chuck O'Neill. I and a few others researched him four years ago and found that his wife is a Mormon. When people asked him about it publicly, he chose not to respond. Then his wife's Facebook page was removed. Go look on her page now. It starts back up in May 2019. You've already heard me say that today. None of us claim that Trump is a Christian. Tom claims to be with zero testimony online, and he refuses to answer questions about his wife, Sienna Hofling. If Christians are going to vote for Tom, yes, it is a wasted vote. You should at least be informed. That is exactly what I read. I answer what I wrote and what I just read to you word for word. You can go to my Facebook page right now and go see word for word what I said. In fact, you can see word for word everything I said underneath that post. Now, I say this because these are the questions that Chuck O'Neill was ask, asking. These are the same questions I've been asking. Is, Tom, who are you? When I check out your Facebook page, to your credit, I see lots of scripture. The problem is, is that I would also see the same thing on friends of mine who are Mormons. So Mormons, a Mormon page will look the exact same as yours. So do Roman Catholic, so do Jehovah's Witness. Quoting scripture and putting it up there. You do a lot of Trump bashing. I see that up there. What I don't see is I don't see any testimony for who you are. I don't see things like where you go to church, who your pastor is. I don't see what you believe the gospel to be. I don't see what you believe to be false religions. And that's very pertinent right now because your wife was a Mormon. You guys deleted her Facebook page four years ago. It was not by accident. It was deleted. And you've never answered those questions about Mormonism. Okay, Anthony, before you go on, let me, let me hit with one thing. Remember what he said in that post. And if I could find it, I'll bring it up. But he told you that you were a liar about that. And he told you, you can go back to her page and you'll see that there's nothing about that there. Yeah. Well, but if she deleted it and started a new account, there's no way to fact check it. And if he knows that, then he's being deceitful. And that is a lie. That's right. And one thing that really upset me about all this, I, I, I'm a big boy. I can handle stuff. I, I'm not worried about it. I listen to atheists and people make fun of me when I'm on New York City street corners. But when, it, when somebody who's a professing Christian calls me a liar, I take that as a serious charge. I want to make sure that I didn't misrepresent something or somebody. Because, I, again, if I lied about anything, I will be the first one to repent and fess up. If I mischaracterize somebody, when it's pointed out to me, I will repent and I will fess up. The problem here is that I didn't lie. I did not lie about the Mormonism. It was there four years ago. And, and I pointed out why was her Facebook page removed and started back up again in May 2019. I agree with you, Tom. There is nothing about Mormonism since May of 2019. That is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about 2016 when you're running for president. That is where there were plenty of Mormon posts on there about your wife being a Mormon. So, so that, that part is true. Now, here's what's, here's what's interesting. Anybody can go to my Facebook page. You can read through. You can read through my comments where I'm trying to defend myself, where I was being accused of lying and slandering. I have clarified my comments. I was, I was told that I was lying about her Mormonism. Well, guess what? Tom did admit to that later on. He admitted because... He told somebody else she was a Mormon. Somebody sent me that screenshot on Facebook and I posted it. She's still a Mormon. That's on that's on the Facebook page. I was also told that I, I'm a liar because I, I supposedly said that Tom is, has zero testimony online where he's got lots of testimony. I clarified that. It is not about posting scripture verses, which any Mormon and Catholic and Jehovah's Witness can do. It was about a testimony about, you're a sinner. <laughs> Were you saved by grace through faith in Christ alone? According to what the Bible, scripture alone, teaches to the glory of God alone. Is, is that who you are? Is that what your, 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 um, your testimony is? I don't see that online. 
I don't exactly where you go to church online. Well, after you were pressed long enough and you just you were very shifty. I didn't want to call it deceitful, but you were very shifty in how you were answering all kinds of questions. What you kept doing is you would not answer my direct questions. You kept making up new questions and answering those. You were committing straw man questions. And then every time you would you would answer the straw man question, you would call me a liar because you're answering the question you made up. You never directly answered my questions. Finally, you admitted to somebody else later who also, you know, ended up being on this thread that you have a home church. And now you still haven't said who the pastor is, who attends, or how many people attend. For all we know, it's just you and your Mormon wife. But but the reality is, is you have not said anything about it that other than you attend home church and that the that the closest church to you is a liberal Methodist church. Look, I get it. There's a lot of bad churches around. When we left our old churches after one emergent church eight years ago, it took us a little while to find our new church. It wasn't until somebody told me about ninemarks.org that I found a new church that we that it, we go to. It's a very biblically sound church, wonderful pastor, wonderful people go to church here. But but here's the thing. If I couldn't find that church, which is 30, almost 30 minutes away for us to drive to, or I ask literally 50 churches on the way that are all bad, I would drive an hour. And, exactly. if, and if I couldn't drive an hour, I would drive two hours. Well, and, you know, I've, I've been doing that for the past year. You have yeah. been year. And I then, mean, my, my church in Pennsylvania was over an hour away. And uh, except for COVID, when I had to do everything online, I was doing that drive. And then you moved because you were being closer. Correct. I moved. I, I moved to be closer to the church and further from what you know everything else in Jersey. Which what's what's good in Jersey? Not much. All right. So, <laughs> <clears throat> but no. I mean, I, I moved so that I can serve in a local church and and be closer and do more there. But yeah, I've been driving for you know an hour to church. It, is it is it a wonderful thing to get up at like? The, early, the day I get up the earliest is Sunday morning because I got to get up at like 5, 5, 30, you know, to be able to get to church in time to set up because it's a church plant. We got to set everything up. I got to do all that. So, yeah, you, that's what you do. Well, that's what you do when you <clears throat> you have a dedication to want to be a part of the body of Christ, when you want to be in fellowship. You know, um, you think it's, it's, it's a struggle for when you can't find a solid biblical church to be with that you're w willing to take on because it's that important. And um, I happen to know the area that um, Tom lives in, and there are biblical churches around the area. There's a lot of Roman Catholic churches, there are a lot of uh, apostate Methodist churches, and there's a lot of other you know, very bad churches. And I, I admit that there's a lot of really bad churches, but there are biblical churches in the area. Um, and, you know, it's, it's not that there's not any, um, uh, I mean, you're, you're less than an hour away from Des Moines, Iowa. I mean, uh, from where he's at. And I mean, about an hour, about an hour away from Des Moines, Iowa, if you want to drive and, and there's, and you know, with an hour radius, there are definitely biblical churches. So that's uh, not the best argument to make. But, you know, you know, I guess where I, where I look at it as um, is when these arguments were being made, it started out with the question that I saw asked was uh, from Anthony. And Anthony's my dear brother. I love him. I'll defend him. Um, and if anybody starts saying something about him disparaging, I'm going to step in because I know Anthony. You know, I know Andrew. I know John. And I'm going to step in and say something because I know these men, they're men of integrity. And there's this post that comes up and it says uh, from this guy, Cletus, is your wife a Mormon? And Tom says, yeah, that's no big secret. And it starts a litany, an avalanche of how dare yous and, and just all this stuff. You're mis misspeaking, you're misquoting uh, me, uh, you're being disparaging and whatnot. And, and I was in shock. At, at the things that I saw, you know, that were coming from a person that's, you know, a biblical Christian, the, the most Christian man in uh, in this race, the the only biblical Christian in this race and, and all these things that were coming out. I'm like, wait a minute. This doesn't match up what I was seeing. It just didn't match. So you know, that that's what I want to throw in there real quick. Yeah, no, that's that's right. And so. You know, what, what we saw on this post, I've got it pulled up right now as well, is is he called me and Andrew 
um, slanderous liars. Yeah. Well, and, and one of the things he also said is that we're unrepentant, which I thought was funny because it shows he doesn't have it, know anything about me. Anyone who knows me, who follows me on social media, he knows that when I sin in public, if I say something that's wrong, if I do something inappropriate, I make it public and I yeah. repent in public. So for him to say I'm an unrepentant, I'm a liar, unchristian, and unrepentant. So what you're trying to say is this, you don't actually delete your uh, no, Facebook. I, and all actually, that. yeah, one of the things I purposely won't do is I, when I do something wrong, I won't delete it. I'll exactly. apologize on there so that everyone can see not only did I do wrong, but they could see the repentance. I don't, I don't try to cover it up. You know, no. what, what I saw here was, uh, if you don't mind me just uh, pointing this out, I saw Tom Hofling saying your main assertion in, in your post question, you were asserting quite clearly that I am not a Christian. From what I saw, you posted this this uh, question from this Cletus uh, Murto, um, and I don't know when this was done. I don't know when he when he asked the question and, and gave the answer, but the answer that I saw in here. Uh, now, now I know you're, you're going to answer this in a second, but I didn't see anywhere where you said that he wasn't a Christian and I went and looked. I didn't, uh, we, I, I didn't see Anthony saying that. I know I didn't say it. Yeah. Well, well so I wanted to respond with his wife. Yeah, exactly. I, I was very clear why, because the, the, if she is a, if she's given her life to Christ and, and one of the things I think he's trying to do is say, She's still a Mormon, but gave her life to Christ. Exactly. I think that's what it, that's what I understood. And, and that's why he's trying to say when Joe Conkle said he lied, he was yeah. like, no, I didn't. And he, it's 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 this. I mean, that's why I said he's he's obviously a politician. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I saw you say that. You know, he's trying to see how he can just play both sides of it. But the reality is, if you're a Christian, you've you you're grew up Mormon you recognize the Mormon church has a false gospel. Now, for people who don't know what the Mormon church teaches, it teaches that that basically all the churches fell, fell away from the truth, and we lost the true gospel message, and it was given to Joseph Smith. The true gospel message is that in eternity, you can have eternal marriage, which something, by the way, Tom's wife can never do because he's not a Mormon. OK, exactly. she can't have the full gospel message because she can't get to the celestial kingdom because she can't be temple worthy. And so because of that, she could never in Mormonism reach to the, the highest level of heaven where she could become a god of her own planet. OK, so so here's the thing you have to recognize that is so foreign to Christianity. You cannot, I don't believe in this, a Christianity. You cannot be a Christian and still be in a church of Mormonism that teaches just demonic things. Okay? Teaching that Jesus and Lucifer were brothers. Exactly. Teaching works salvation. Th these are things that as a believer in Christ know. If you are staying in the Mormon church and thinking it's okay, yes, I I would have no other choice but to question your claim of being a Christian because you gave your life to Christ maybe in the Mormon sense. And he wouldn't answer the question, has she, has she been getting baptized for the dead? What is that? That's when someone on earth gets baptized so somebody else can, for them, so that their sins can be forgiven. In other words, you need to be baptized to be saved. And so they get baptized for people that have died and haven't been baptized yet under Mormonism. And so that they can have a second chance. So after you die, you can still have a second chance at going to heaven. This is what Mormonism teaches. Now, maybe, maybe she's a really bad Mormon and doesn't believe what Mormonism teaches. He called me a liar for saying what his, what that I was supposedly saying what his wife believes. I never said what his wife believes. I didn't delete any posts. You can go check. I said what Mormonism 
beliefs. That I am an authority on. That is something I've spent many years studying. I wrote a book on it. What do they believe? Go check it out. I have even given it to authorities in the Mormon church, and they have said I'm accurate to their beliefs. So this is what Mormonism believes. You know, one thing that, but then she's not a good Mormon. One thing that I wanted to point out is that I had, we had so many people saying that the, you know, the only biblical uh, ele- person that you can elect biblically is Tom. Now, like I said, I don't have anything against Tom. Uh, I try to be very respectful when I when I sent uh, my comment to him. I, I think you guys saw that. Um, I try to be very respectful. But what struck me is people were saying, well, Donald Trump, he's a philanderer and he's done all this stuff in his past. He's got three marriages and and then there's the wife issue and, and whatnot. Uh, he's got all these different wives and he's a bad guy, bad guy, bad guy. And I go, wait a minute. Um, People have said, well, she's a Roman Catholic. So you can't, you can't vote for a a Roman Catholic uh, first lady and a a bad president and everything else. And then these issues came up and I said, wait a minute, Uh, Mr. Holfling, uh, this is why I asked the questions. I said, Mr. Holfling, excuse me, sir. Uh, I have, I've known you for years and I've known Anthony for years. You made the assertion in the comment that Anthony's, uh, this post that he was making was assuming uh, that uh, his the article made it clear that you're not a Christian. I said to defend Anthony, I said, I don't see that uh, even a hint of that. But then I went down and I said, this is from Cletus Murto. And he asked the question. So I wanted to ask for clarity. I said, I'm not, I'm not accusing you of anything, but are you denying that this conversation with Mr. Murto happened? Are you denying the screen capture uh, which shows that you affirm that your wife is slash was a Mormon. Is your wife a practicing a Mormon or has she ever been a Mormon or is, or was she a Mormon when the picture was taken? And the last one I said, or is she a former Mormon who has renounced that cult and has repented of her sin and rebellion against the one true living God and placed her faith and hope in the only Jesus Christ who is not the false God of Mormonism, but rather the second person of the Trinity, the eternally self-existent, uncreated God incarnate. And I said, thank you for your, your, your uh, time and your questions. And I try to be very respectful. And it, he did not answer one of my questions, but he uh, turned around and said I was lying because he had been, uh, I said that he had been talking about uh, the president and his marriage and things like that in the past. And that there was not an answer to the question at all. But then he, and it, like you said, uh, a- a- uh, Andrew, is he inadvertently answered when he finally answered uh, Joe Conkle. I thought it was great oh. that Joe had finally called him out and, and put it out in the truth and, and brought it out in reality of exactly what he said for everybody to see. Okay, so let's bring this to apologetics. Yes, sir. So here's what what I see with this. Apologetically, this is what the show is going to be about, right? We got to talk apologetics. The tactics people use to avoid answering questions. That's what he did. What was he doing? He was asked direct questions. He didn't answer them. Instead, what he did was attack the person. It's what's called an ad hominem attack. It's when you you go after the person. It's at the person. And so he basically was saying that myself, Anthony, you were liars. That's attacking our character. That's attacking the person, not answering the question. So what an ad hominem attack does is to basically call into question the person's character or the person themselves, so that you don't have to answer the actual argument. In other words, the the way he's saying it is, well, you're a liar. And he actually said that explicitly at one point. I don't owe you anything. I don't have to answer you because you're you're liars and unrepentant and unchristian. So so he was saying things like this. What that does is it basically says that you don't have to give an answer or more specifically any answer that we do say anything that we do say is is flawed because we're liars we're unchristian we're you know and it was him who questioned our christianity and in fact if you read through the thread i actually did play his game i i acted the same way he did and he got really upset with it and then i pointed out i said don't you see all i did was take your words 
and just reversed it and put it on you. Yep. And he couldn't see that. All right. So an ad hominem attack, the purpose of it is to avoid answering an argument by attacking the person to for to call into question the person's character, to basically say that this person can't even ask the question. It doesn't it doesn't matter because the person themselves is the problem. That's an ad hominem. Amen. Amen. You know what I what I found really interesting is that. We've dealt with with Mike Reed for months now, right? Going back to what April, I think that's the first time we did it, maybe late March, early April, first time we did a podcast. And we've done multiple podcasts. We've got many more coming over the next six months. And what have we seen? An avoidance of wanting to ask it to answer the questions. Very fair questions, accusations that are out there. And uh, instead, the tactic has just been exactly what you said, Andrew, is, is an ad hominem attacks. Rather than dealing with legitimate questions, trying to ridicule and and uh, and uh, ruin the reputation of the person that is asking those legitimate questions. And no, exactly. At no point did I accuse Tom Hoefling of not being a Christian. All I did was point out the fact I don't see stuff online. If people are going to tell me you need to vote for Tom Hoefling. He's a righteous man. Then the first thing I should ask is, really? Show me evidence. Yep. Where is the righteousness? I want to see who I'm voting for. But he provided it. He said that he went to your wall and he his wall, and he has more scripture quotations than you have. So that's his evidence. But you know what? I As you said, there's plenty of Mormons that do the same thing. There's plenty of Catholic, more so Catholics. Mormons are going to, you know, Mormons do that when they're they're in Christian groups, right? But just quoting scripture doesn't make you a Christian. It's not a testimony. I think that's why you started off this show by by giving, you know, what was your your testimony? Where do you go to church? Being able to say these things, you know, he can't do that. It doesn't seem, at least. Um, we we put out what we believe. What does he believe? He 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 goes to a home church, from what I understand. He, he did say that he admitted he goes to a home church. We know so, me too. So yeah. Now the question when you say you're going to a home church, I'm going to say okay. What's what's the purpose? Uh, their home churches are fine. When I first preached, the very first time I preached at the Master's Church of Bucks County in September of 2018, it was in a loft over a garage in someone's home. Technically, it was a home church until we could find a place to rent. But we have established pastors. Mm -hmm. We we're you know conducting ourselves in line with the, the way a biblical church would be. We now have a building, but so the question is if you don't have a church building and you're meeting in a home for that purpose, okay, that that's not an issue. Plenty of churches do that. However, I also know plenty of people that do home church and I'm putting the air quotes there because home churches, I really don't want the accountability of church. I want to just, I mean, look, <clears throat> he's the favored candidate of AHA. Exactly. Um, abolish human abortion. It's a cult that pulls people out of churches into their fellowships. They and stood they in front of church. Dr. MacArthur's church and screamed and yelled and threatened and, and did all kinds of stuff. You know, Bud was there. Anthony, uh, you were there. You were there. Anthony they didn't was there. Want to talk to me. <laughs> I, I'm actually with AHA. I'm him who, who literally, I was told, I am he who cannot be mentioned. Uh, I remember that. I'm a cult, and I proved it. I supported it, and they don't like that. But Tom is the favored candidate of AHA, and they pull people out of biblical churches for home groups where they don't have pastors, they don't have deacons, they don't practice church discipline, they're not actually established out of the church, they just get together and talk the Bible. They... You know, are they doing what is church? And if you want to to know what church is, get I mean, just get my book. What do we believe? I have a whole chapter on the history of the church. Go to the Rap Report podcast. We have five episodes that Bud and I did on what is the church. And so this is the thing you end up seeing is that 
if he's saying he's in a home church, I want to know the structure of that church. Is it just him, he and his wife, who he claims is a Christian? Or does she go back to the Mormon church? Well, see, and that's where I was in question to ask. And that's why I was questioning. You know, it's it's okay. Look, look, if somebody's a Mormon and or or you know, whatever, you know, Roman Catholic or whatever else, you know, and they come into they come into a politics and they they work their way up to the presidency. That's not the issue that that we're arguing about. That's not the issue and discussion we're having right now. The issue that we're having right now is if you're going to put someone as the biblical candidate, the scriptural Christian candidate, then you know there's some uh, there's some I's that need to be dotted and some T's that need to be crossed where we can talk about that, right? And, and you know now if you want to start you know apologetically, you want to start talking about who's the one that's going to help the the body of Christ to further advance the the word of God, the gospel of God, the protection of life, the protection of you know, the, the freedoms that we we enjoy so that we can proclaim the gospel. Well, I, I think there's only one person that that actually is going to foot that bill. You know, and I, I'll tell you, it's it's definitely not going to be um, Kamala Harris. Well, look, it, you know, Tom wasn't willing to say where he goes to church. Yep. You know, wasn't able to, didn't want to give these things. Let me tell you, son, Mike Pence, at least, I mean, not when he's in D.C., Mike Pence goes to a solid church. I know the church. I've been to the church. I have family members that know Mike Pence personally. They go. They went to church with him. They would have dinner with him. They know him. Okay, so he is a solid believer. So you know, for Tom, you know, okay, why don't you do what what we've done here? What Mike Pence? We know what church Mike Pence goes to in Indiana, at least. You know the. the why can't you do the same? Why don't you explain this? If you're going to set yourself up as the Christian candidate, I, I think these are fair questions. I think these are legitimate questions that should be answered. And if you're going to set yourself up as the Christian candidate, someone someone posted this. I, I lost the comment. I think it might have been Ethan that asked, you know, f- <clears throat> how long ago have they been married? When, like, when did he become a believer? After he got married? Okay, this becomes an important question. If he's if he's the Christian candidate, well, <clears throat> we've already established she was raised Mormon, so she would have been Mormon before they got married. Did he, as a Christian, marry a Mormon? Unequally yoked. Yeah. Good is, point. Is, he, is he? Did he do it? Have a sinful marriage? He was unequally yoked. That's a fair question, I think, to ask. The fact that he claims she is given her life to Christ, then it's, I think it's a fair question to say, is she still going to the LDS church? Because if she is, well, <clears throat> I'd have to question his ability to lead his home. If he's saying she's a believer. Chris made a good point here. Well, he says, Chris Honhol says, and by the way, for those who don't know, Chris Honhol, AKA Captain America. America. Oh, wait, now he's, Daredevil, so I guess we just call him Captain Devil. Okay, Chris Captain Devil Hunt. <clears throat> well, he put up a comment, you know, earlier about uh, wherever it was, Andrew, who he who should not be named Rappaport. So, you know, Chris, Chris Captain Devil Honholz, uh says, if you if you bill yourself as a Christian, and that's why people should vote for you, then you need to be able to defend that. And that is the point. And that I think that was Anthony's point in asking the question. This is the point that we raised with him. He didn't want to answer. He was dodging it. And, and that is concerning. Exactly. Okay. Okay, John, you, you posted a, his biography here in, in the private chat. What did you find there? Oh, I found all sorts of interesting things. If you look in the biography there, let me share screen, I guess. Uh, Chrome tab and biography. Can you see that? No, we can't. Not yet. We have to do it with the sync soul voice. I, I mean, I can share it if you want. You know, I know you're technically challenged there. Uh, yeah. Right. We woke you up from your nap. Here you go. You tell us where you. Yeah. The nice thing about the new banner, by the way, folks, if you haven't seen, we got our new logos. Is it covers. 
fraternity. They're matched up on the new website. If you went to apologeticslive.com, you uh, saw our new logo. But let me let me stop hiding Anthony's face, even though it, it was an improvement. Um, <laughs> I'll, uh, but yeah, but uh, I hope I hope you all like the new website at strivingfraternity.org. It is, uh, I think it's a, a a good improvement on what we had. So. Uh, here we are. Let me make this bigger for you, and you tell me what you want me to. A third paragraph. Look over there where it talks about Tom and his wife. Well, go ahead and read it. Tom and his wife, Sienna, celebrated their 14th wedding anniversary last December. Since their marriage, their home has been in Laurelville, uh, where he has raised their seven young children. Tom also had five children from his first marriage. Now, I don't know what happened between there. Maybe his, his first wife died or whatever, but uh, or something happened. Who knows? But uh, maybe Anthony might know a little more detail of that or 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 something. But anyway, um, but anyways, he's had two marriages, but um, two passed away from his early childhood. Uh, his three living adult children live in Iowa, Iowa and Idaho. Um First of all, what 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 threw me off, or what what gave me a pretty good hint, is the f he has seven seven kids. No, wait, wait. Tom also. Oh yeah, yeah. He he has right now currently seven young children in his in his family right now. What religion promotes multiple kids? <laughs> Yeah, but you know what I don't see anywhere on here is when he became a Christian. No, no, that's interesting. And I've actually, I've actually so about that. Here becomes it becomes even more of a dilemma. If he was claiming to be a Christian, divorced, and remarried a Mormon, you see, there's more questions that have to be asked here from a Christian candidate. Exactly. He's billing himself. That's what everyone's promoting him as the Christian candidate. And you you have divorce. I mean, for those who, who sit here and say, well, you know, Trump is, a, is an adulterer. Well, then we need to find out what happened with this divorce. Was he an adulterer, too? Is he is he the same category, maybe, as Donald Trump? I mean, I, that would be a very fair question to ask, I would think. When did he get saved? Did he did he end up divorcing? Did he cause the divorce? Was it a legitimate reason to get remarried? And then he married a Mormon? Did he do all this as a believer? If you're going to say you're a Christian candidate, I think these are fair questions. Now, I'll give a challenge out to Ricky Gantz. Will you ask these questions? That'll so, be a challenge. So Rick, Ricky did talk. I talked to Ricky about a week ago, and he did say that he, that when he asked Tom to be on his show, that he was going to bring up all these hard questions. So as far as I know, I don't want to speak for Ricky, but from our conversation, it sounded like Ricky was comfortable to do it, and Tom had agreed to answer any of these questions that Ricky's going to ask that are the hard questions, including about his wife being a Mormon. So we'll see. Like I said, I'm going to tune in on October 6th. I want to see the show. I want to see how he answers. Um, you know, and, and the thing that I want to make sure that we, that we all say here, look, Tom Hoefling may, may very well be a nice guy, and he may very well have frustration based on these Facebook accounts. We don't know what what his life is like, right? We don't under we don't know um, what had happened because we could easily we could easily postulate that he got saved out of whatever his his wife did not, and and this is this is a really rough subject, a personal subject where he's constantly praying for his wife's salvation. Right? So we have to understand that this is entirely possible. Well, no, 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 we can't with that because he believes she is saved. So he wouldn't be praying for her salvation. Yeah, he actually said that. Yeah. I, I remember in the thread there, he did say, you know, So he's saying she's, she's, a Christian. Mormon, she's a Mormon who gave her light to Christ. Right. Yeah, I, I, I know. I saw that. And, may, you know, again, we don't know what Tom's theology is. So is he maybe confused on, on all this? I, I don't know. I, I, 
I what I want to do is make sure that, that we give as much benefit of the doubt as we should or can do in a whole situation. Yeah. And, and and I don't want to misrepresent or mischaracterize because I don't want him to come back and call any of us a slander or a liar and actually be telling the truth that time. When <laughs> it called us a liar and a slanderer, is called me a slanderer. In fact, Tom Hoefling was either being deceitful or he was deflecting or he was lying. I don't know which. I can't go into his heart, but he was wrong when he did those things. And, uh, and, and again, we have established his wife is a Mormon that he doesn't have testimony online as to his, his walk in Christianity. And we don't know where he goes to church or who the pastor is. All we know is he goes to a home church. It, this is, this is the reality. And so if he wants to be the Christian candidate, that he has built himself to be the other people have built him to be, then you know what? Come forward. Tell us. But what I see in these Facebook posts is that you originally said you were going to answer. You're going to take time to answer um, Chuck O'Neill's questions in that open letter to you. You told multiple people, including Mason Goodnight, who who I, I think is a very stand-up guy from what I've seen of him. He was he did some initial work before I did to expose Mike Reed. And, and Mason said, Mason came back and told us that Tom is going to answer. He's been on the road. He's going to come back and answer. But we look at the th Facebook thread and you, you're, you declined. You say you're not going to do it. We, we offer for you to come out of the show and, and, be, and, and allow you to speak. This was not a trap. It was to get you on, to let you speak and, and answer questions and be truthful. Instead, what do you do? You say, well, you know, I, was, I would have come on or, you know, I normally come on, but now I'm not going to. Are you kidding me? Like the whole time we've been forthright in asking these questions and the whole time you've been avoiding them. I, I'm sorry. It's, it, this, this isn't Christian-like behavior. This isn't what exactly. who is a who calls himself a Christian and a Christian righteous candidate. This is not what they would do. Sorry. And it Amen. put us on a pedestal. I mean, none of us are perfect here on this podcast. Yeah, let, let me just give some comments that were out here. So Chris Honholds um, says this great, great point that he makes. We're not saying whether or not he is qualified to run for president. It's not about whether he whether he has good politics or not. It's about his claim to be a Christian as part of his character. Melissa says if he thinks his wife is saved, dot, 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 he needs to question his own salvation. And I think what she's getting to is, is the Mormonism. Then you have Humble Clay who says if, if she gave her life to Christ, she would denounce Mormonism. And that, that's the thing that we are trying to say there. All right. Chris says, always a bit concerning if someone wants to build themselves as a Christian to be voted for because he's a Christian, but not willing to discuss your professed faith. Well, you know, if you think about it, how many people have said that Mitt Romney is a Christian? Yeah. Well, Billy Graham ended up, you know, Billy Graham, after he met with Mitt Romney, removed Mormonism as a cult on their Billy Graham uh, website. Yeah, and, and you think about it, that it's really easy for, for people to, to to say, oh, they're a Christian, so I've got to vote for them. They're a Christian. Okay, what do they believe? If I'm gonna tell you, if you know, if he's a Mormon or if or if he's a, a, a Roman Catholic, then I'm gonna say I have some very serious doubts. If he's a Mormon, he's not a Christian. Yeah. You know, if if he's a Roman Catholic, I I'm gonna say, you know, I I I am gonna say the chances are he's not, you know. Uh, yeah. if he's if he's following the church of Rome, you know, um in the area that he lives in, uh, the Methodist church there is uh, got some, some some serious issues. I would I would have some issues with some of those things that's being taught there, you know. Yeah. Well, here's here's another comment from Chris Honholds. You know, maybe we spun he Chris come on the show. He should. I was going to say that Chris needs to get on here and stop just comment. You know, commenting there. You know, it's great when he comes I'll in. Say, why do you have me on here? You just have him. We could have ten people in here. We're we, waiting for a chicken to Maybe we spun Chris up. Maybe we, we're going to hear on Voice of Reason Radio. We may hear about this. Who knows? But Chris said, could it be he's irritated because he's never actually expected to be questioned about his faith? Truly a disappointing response on his part. And, and I agree. Now, you know, one of the things 
you know, I will say, because we're getting to the end of the show and I can't go back far enough to get the comment. You know, Justin, before we even went live, you pointed out that someone made a comment about how they met with Tom and he is a he's a, a righteous person. And, you know, they, that this show is just going to be about, you know, lying and slandering him or, or all this stuff. Um, it was interesting because if you look at the description that that Anthony set for the show, didn't mention anything about Tom. Actually, when Josh was putting it up online, I, I said, I'll oh, throw a picture of, of Tom up there since we're going to mention him. But that's it. All, that, all she had to go off of was a picture or did Tom maybe say, hey, f- folks, get out here and defend me? I don't know. Uh, but he had a defender that he, the only thing I could think of is that Virginia saw the Facebook thread and made assumptions um, or someone sent her to go defend. But she's not she hasn't responded that I saw since. Um, I don't think that anybody can legitimately say after listening to the hour and 55 minutes that we've slandered, said anything that was untrue, that we've put out anything that was negative, that was not warranted, that was yeah. not warranted. Hey, Anthony, what is what is that uh, armrest you have there under your left arm? You Did you finally find a good purpose for that? I the did. book on the origin of kinds, it makes a good armrest? It's, it's yeah. a paperweight, too. A good paperweight. <laughs> What, why don't you tell us about that book? Yeah, so, I'm, I'm going to have to write a book. John, you got to start writing. <laughs> John's going to write a book about chickens. <laughs> oh, he's holding up his, his, he's holding up my Skylar red Bible. Oh, he, doesn't he kind of look like Joe Biden? In- <laughs> <laughs> he smells Bibles, not hair. <laughs> oh man, that was so bad. Joe Bibles, not, not little kids. Yeah. <laughs> okay. so yeah um, so you know this book on the origin of kinds is a book that uh, was published three and a half over three and a half years ago already i can't believe how much time has passed where we take lay level precept which is what we originally were going to talk about tonight. that's why i have the book out um, lay level precept creation apologetics and and uh, biblical evangelism and how we wrap those together basically to help train somebody in how to think during evangelism and how to be able to answer questions and answer challenges. And for people who master what's in this book in terms of the precept, you will be able to talk to anybody regardless of what their scientific degrees are, being a true medical doctor or or fake doctor like a dentist or anything else. (laughs) You'd be able to answer any of those things. And, And honestly, look, I, I've used what's in this book with with guys who are getting their PhDs in, in evolutionary genetics and others. And, and it is so, so simple to be able to use and, and to refute the things they say and get to the gospel the way we're supposed to. So that's what this book's about. At some point, eventually, we're going to talk about this book some more. Um, Finally. I will say, though, next week, because I know we're closing up real soon here. Next week, we have a really fun show. There is, I mean, I think today was a lot of fun, but next week we we had a an evolutionist reach out to me. A guy who says he's agnostic, doesn't hate Christians. He says he's dating a Christian, which I'm like, eh. he says it's, he's got a number of Christians in his family. He's not Christian. He'd rather not talk about Christianity. Well, obviously I'm going to have to witness to him next week, but he's coming on the show because he wants to speak about um, evolution. He heard the debate that I had done on this show um i don't know five six months ago now with the, the guy who had a master's degree in in uh, evolution and and uh and you know for anybody who watched that debate it was he was miserable in it unfortunately and uh so this guy thinks he can do a better job he wants to use botany to prove microevolution which in then turn to macroevolution and you know what we'll show you how how to use this book to be able to to uh, refute all those things, but he's coming on next week. Should be a great show. It's not going to be a debate. It's just going to be uh, a discussion. And it's going to be open. And it's going to be open discussion, right? Anybody can come in. His friends can come in. Friends of the show, friends of mine can come in. Um, even friends of Andrew will let in. You can come into the show and and ask questions to either one of us. And it should be a fun discussion next week. 
Well, hey, you know, one thing I want to point out just real quick is that book that uh, that Anthony's got. It was on the New York Times worst seller list, and it has over thirty six people have bought this book. You have got to get one before it goes off the shelf. It is that serious. Okay, well, Jim Clark said I read the book; it helped me. Chris Hanhold says my copy is holding my shelf down, keeps it from floating off the wall. I'll read it eventually. <laughs> Okay, so so there is that, but but I noted something. Anthony has trained this audience in a bad way. I, I you know, I mean, uh -oh. Ethan is saying, hey, yeah, kick Andrew out and keep it going. He's he's he earlier, um, humble Clay had said, give Andrew the boot and keep the show going. <laughs> and that started because. Uh, earlier, if I could find it, is here's Humble Clay saying, oh, so we're not having a super extra long show tonight? Disappointed. So, so Anthony, you've trained people that two hours of Apologetics Live just isn't enough. Um, now, we, we, have, we have a couple other things that we might have, Anthony. Uh, someone you and I know from Boise would like to know if we would have someone on and I said, it's an open show. Anyone can come on anytime, but someone, he would like someone to come on and convince us that the earth is the center of the universe and it actually doesn't spin. So oh. he would like to, he would like to, to, and, and it gets even better, Anthony, the guy's a Catholic. And so I'm like, okay, have him come on, but I don't know that we're going to talk about the earth. We're going to talk about the gospel because that's what he needs. Yeah. That's going to get really hard. <laughs> It's, I love I love KT because she says I want Andrew to stay. See, oh, at least there's one. Yeah, <laughs> and so so, so uh, I guess with that, Anthony, I'll I'll let you close out. But we do have I am planning to start up the Rap Report dailies again. Oh, we we oh, we're gonna do that, huh? You've got to let me do this. Come on, don't don't take this away from me. <laughs> is this how we're gonna close out the show? I don't know. It's a minute and 15 seconds. It's, I mean, this is the funniest thing I've ever seen. So. Will we be able to hear it to even have the tech? I don't on? know. I, I I may not. If, if you can't hear it, I repent. Please tell me you can hear it. Me. I got to get this right. And why should the voters believe that you can win the national election? I, was a I can hear it. Caucus. There been no caucus? No, you haven't. You're a lying dog faced pony soldier. <laughs> a damn liar, man. That's not true. And no one has ever said that. No man has a right to raise a hand to a woman in anger. And so we have to just change the culture, period, and keep punching at it and punching at it and punching at it. If you want to check my shame on it, let's do push ups together, man. Let's do, let's run. Let's do whatever you want to do. It is important that I and Nevada have spoken, but look. Get your work straight, Jack. I'm Jill Biden's husband. I work for Cedric Richmond. Are you joking? Yep. Granddaughters not only love their dads, their grandpops, they always like them, and that's the great thing. Thank you, baby. Thanks. I want you to meet Finnegan. Wow. That wasn't even the worst of it. There's more. <laughs> the hair smelly thing is the crazy one. Yeah, yeah, that is. <laughs> and so a vote for Tom Hoefling is voting for the hair smelly guy. Yeah. You know, the thing, the the thing. The thing. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, we could go on for hours, but uh I know that that Andrew would like to end the show here real soon. I, you know, I want to, I, I may start taking John's role of falling asleep during the show. No, no. You were snoring. Sorry. We put you, we, we got you on camera and you were snoring. Yeah, we did that. We did that. I mean, you, you woke yourself up, but yeah. When hey. you heard your own snoring. Hey. <laughs> uh, Play my clip that I just gave you guys, and you got to listen to this. This is why Joe Biden should not ever, ever, ever. How be long is it? Oh, it's not that long. It's only like. Uh, uh, well, define not that long because Anthony thinks not. Anthony thinks not that long is actually like. 
you know, four hours, five hours for a show. Being on a, on a box while you're waiting to get on and just sitting, standing for hours to prevent you from getting on. It kind of is a okay. show now. I can just... All right. Well, well, we'll play your two minute clip. That's just audio. So what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to just sit here and look pretty. Just listen. Yep. I don't. There we go. Two cranial aneurysms. And they literally had to take the top of my head off. I mean, they take a saw and they cut your head off and, and go in to find the artery that is one was leaking, the other that hadn't before it burst. There's this, those of you who are docs know there's a every, every, every profession, every profession has their sick jokes. The joke among among docs is how do you know someone's had an aneurysm, cranial aneurysm on the autopsy table? Only 20% of the people have it even get to the table. Well, one of the fascinating things is the second operation after the first one, which was a bleed and they gave me a relatively low chance of surviving. I remember going down the doc, asking the doc, and we, you know, you're counting the ceiling tiles and you're heading into the operating room. You, a lot of you've been there. And uh, I said, doc, what, what are my chances? I had two great neurosurgeons. And I'll never forget, I will not mention his name, but he was a leading neurosurgeon in the, in the in the world. Um, he said, uh, Senator, for mortality or morbidity? And I'm thinking, <laughs> no, I swear to God. I'm thinking, oh, geez, you know, like, well, I said, let me put it this way. It was a long road to the operating room. I said, sister, absolutely true story. I said, what are my chances of getting off this table and being completely normal? He said, well, your chances of living are a lot better. <laughs> and I said, okay, what are they? He said, well, they're, they're, they're in the 35 to 50% range. And I thought, well, seriously, I was a born optimist. I said, well, hell, that means 35 out of 100, 50 out of 100 make it. I, was going, I might as well be the one. I said, well, what's the most likely thing that will happen if I, uh, if, if I live? But what... He said, well, the side of the brain that the first artery, the first aneurysm is on controls your ability to speak. <laughs> and I thought, why in the hell didn't they tell me this before the 88 campaign? Uh, it could have saved us all a lot of trouble. Wow. He had two brain surgeries. Two. That, that explains a lot. I know. It, it does. does. First clip. Wow. So, yeah. Anthony, you're you're six minutes over time. Seven. I can't believe that Andrew Rappaport is gonna vote for him. <laughs> <laughs> On I'm, that note, I can't believe Rappaport's trying to end the show an hour early. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> On that note. <laughs> Well, on that note, everybody, we hope you all had a wonderful night. Uh, Ant Anthony's going to close us out, and and Andrew's going to tell us we need to stop. So, <laughs> y'all have a great night. So, on that, we uh, we thank you guys for being on tonight. And again, you know, there's only two real candidates. It's it's President Trump right now, and it's Joe Biden. One is going to protect our Christian liberties as and and freedoms um, much more than the other. And that's and that's Trump. <clears throat> Tom Hoefling, um, you may be a really nice guy. I, I'm sorry, you don't have a chance to win. Number one, <laughs> number two, is uh, is if you are telling people that you are a Christian man, righteous man, godly man, all's we all's we asked for, all's we ever asked for before all this blew up on Facebook is just what is the testimony. Your, te your personal testimony, where is your wife? Is she Mormon? Is she not a Mormon? Do you go to church? Where do you go to church? Who your pastor is? I mean, some very basic questions. This is all This is all we, we asked. And, uh, and it turned into a whole lot more than it ever should have been. After that, I do believe, people, you need to vote your conscience. I do believe, though, that uh, when you vote your conscience, you have to make sure you understand if you're not voting, what the implications can be on that. In understanding that that this election, there are two candidates, one of which is going to protect Christian worldview that we've seen for four years be much more protective than if Hillary was in. 
And, uh, and I can certainly um, imagine how much worse Joe Biden and Kamala Harris would be. So that's I'll leave you at that. I uh, thank you guys for being on tonight. And uh, Andrew, thank you for being on as a guest onto your own show. I hope Thanks for having me. As a special guest more often. <laughs> John, I wish you had your chickens running around inside your house too, so you could trip over them for us. For yeah. two in a row. Maybe next week. And uh, Pastor yeah. Justin, thank you as always for being on. Next week, uh, please come on the show. We are going to have a lot of fun in the discussion with the evolutionist. And uh, please come on and, and, and be able to share the gospel with him. On that, have a good night. And visit Striving Fraternity Ministries, strivefraternity.org and apologeticslive.com. Good night.